Brands forget that they're storytellers. So it's inserting that story, emotional connections, the who, why, where, what, and what behind that brand, and putting together an experience that brings together media relationships. You're listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, episode 179. I am so excited because today we are talking about experiential PR, which you might be thinking, well, what is that? But it has a lot to do with collaborating with other brands. And I'm very excited because my guest today is Janine Just. She's a good friend of mine of JanineJust.com, but she has an uh, experiential PR firm, and she specializes in creating curated experiences for brands and cl- brand collaborations, which is so exciting that actually as I'm recording this intro and outro, I just got off the phone with one of our SOS students, Yvonne Burkhart, and uh, she's based in San Diego. And when she started uh, in our SOS program, she was talking about how she was really not that confident. And Something really amazing happened throughout the the program. She's uh, tripled her sales by three hundred percent. And one of the ways that she's done that is by having the confidence to go out and ask brands to collaborate with her. And so I wanted to tell you that because this is a great way to grow your business. Get involved with creating and curating experiences for your customer. Get involved in brand collaborations where you can meet new people. Think outside of the box about how you're getting exposure. I think the coolest part about what Yvonne did is that she really, she's a mom and she's really busy. Her kids are young and she's at this point in her business where she really wants to grow. And I was just blown away by what she was telling me about uh, some of the results that she got, not only in the program, but by just having the confidence and the roadmap to put herself out there. And I was just so excited to hear that. So Anyway, you'll be hearing more about Yvonne because I love featuring students who are kicking butt. Uh, Maybe I'll get her on the podcast. We'll see. Uh, And if you're curious about learning more about SOS, uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, you can jump on a a strategy call with Natasha, my girl, Natasha. She's amazing. We'll have a link over for that in the show notes as well. Anyway, I'm pumped for this episode. Janine's amazing and you're going to love everything that you hear. And I hope that you come away from this with brand new ideas. And the reason why I say that is because every year at the beginning of the year, we do a jewelry brand makeover bootcamp and we invite hundreds of designers to join us and basically make over their brand so that they can focus on elevating what they stand for as a brand, create more exposure for their brand, which eventually leads in more sales. And uh, regardless of where you are in business, if you're trying to, if you're at that point where you're trying to get consistent sales or you're somewhere where you're just trying to grow your sales, even more, it's always a great way to kind of dig into why you're doing things, uh, what your brand's all about, get your pricing right and tight. And we walk you through a bunch of exercises that I highly recommend designers doing a little refresh every single year so they're getting on top of it. And they're prepared because business is changing really quickly and you got to stay on top of it and you got to keep growing. And that's another, that's sort of an evolution of why we're talking about experiential PR and new ways of exposure, like getting doing brand collaborations, which is so important. And before we dive into today's episode, I want to share something fun because I love doing fun stuff. And at the end of the year, I wanted to release just like a fun little exercise. So we released a brand new quiz. It's called Your Jewelry Brand's Brilliance Factor. It's designed to show you how you can use your special sparkle or your creativity or whatever you want to call it, your creativity style, to your advantage. and. This is all about helping you build the jewelry business of your dream. So I'm really excited about it. We've been working very hard on it. And the way it's laid out is at the end, whatever your brilliance factor is, I'm going to share with you a bunch of business tips, how to leverage your unique creativity and personality style and your brand approach. And so this is going to be super useful. We have curated content there. I give you like really actionable tips. And we follow up with a very short little email sequence that's going to share some great stories specific to your brilliance factor. So I'd love to invite you to go grab it. You can head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash 
brilliance. That's flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash brilliance and take the quiz. And I can't wait to hear what your brilliance factor is. So you have to report back on our page after you do that or hit us up on social over on IG, send us a DM uh, because it's going to be fun. I'm just really excited and I'm, I'm very proud of what we've been able to create and I hope you enjoy it too. All right, let's dive into today's episode with Janine. Today on Thrive by Design, I have a very special guest. She also spoke at Flourish and Thrive Live this year on our PR panel. Janine Just is with me today. Janine, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. I'm excited to have you here because you were introduced to me by our PR coach here, Sabina Hitchin. And we were just at work wife. Uh, work wife. <laughs> Sabina is Janine's work wife. And maybe I'll be their third work yes, wife. Yes, yes. <laughs> At a certain point. Who knows? I'm like inviting myself to the work we'll wife. to Utah. I know. That's kind of weird. <laughs> we were already talking about buying houses in uh, up the Hudson. I like glommed on to her idea of buying rental properties. And I was like, maybe we could buy one together. That's like really weird and awkward, but like whatever. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> anyway, so Janine, I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you so much. I, I'm really excited to to share, to talk, to educate, and to learn. So I'm excited to have you here because we're talking about a little bit of a different topic today, which is experiential PR. It's not something we've ever had on the podcast before. So before I ask you what it is, why don't you tell me a little bit about your journey before, like in the interview, you told me that you used to intern with Gabby Bernstein. I did. Yeah. Which is so cool. So (laughs) tell, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got into PR and experiential PR. So I actually got into... Un, like really loving PR through Gabby because I was going to FIT, uh, which is the Fashion Institute of Technology. And my major was FMM, which is fashion merchandising and um, management. I'm very creative minded. Unfortunately, all those courses were math car- courses and I <laughs> hate math. So I was really upset that I wasn't able to kind of like use that creative license and kind of see like all my peers taking these awesome classes. So when it was time to do an internship, I kind of looked out there and I was like, hey, that would be interesting to see what public relations is about. I love speaking. I love making relationships. At the time, I was also working at Del Frisco's on 6th and 49th, oh, which no is way. a oh steakhouse. And so it's big onion rings there. Like they do. Huge ones they, that they do. Put on the steak. They I don't do. know why I know that because I don't even really eat Sometimes steak. that was my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> going onion back, rings. Yes, <laughs> onion rings. Going back from like, you know, working full time, going to school full time and interning. Yes. Sometimes an onion ring yeah, does it, like, does the trick, do. <laughs> <laughs> but love, but I loved hospitality and it was such a great learning experience too, to kind of deal with so many different personalities that came through the door, especially, you know, there was a lot of wealth. There was a lot mm-hmm. of celebrity. There was a lot of people that demanded immediate gratification and immediate attention. So it was always interesting to work with unique personalities. Oh, I love it. And also be able to turn something negative because people would complain about waiting or complaining yes. about something that, you know, when you think about it, you're like, wow, these are your complaints for the day when <laughs> there's so much so more. True. I know. You're so fortunate. Um, so to, to turn a negative into a positive was really good to transition into public relations. And that's why I was curious about it and ended up working with with Gabby and really loved creating an experience. And that's really what we're talking about today is, you know, putting together experience and what is experiential PR. And it's something that I don't want to say like I coined, but I feel like it is transcending because earned media is pretty much dead. The, uh, the so what do you mean by earned media? Earned media, getting placement in a magazine, even getting placement in like on online publication. Uh, the days of Vogue magazine and getting a six page spread in that really no longer exists yeah. because it's all advertorial. If yep. you notice the advertisements and then the people that get mentioned are the ones that are advertising. Yeah. It, that, that space is super limited. Totally. My cousin used to work for Harper's Bazaar and she said that only 10%, she was the market editor. And she said only 10% of what they she had creativity to pull for a shoot was non-advertisers. And it's sad because that's what they pride themselves on, discovering these brands, discovering these new emerging designers. Mm-hmm. And that's not there. It used to not be that way. Right. 
I mean, the fall issue, they just had a story in the New York Post that it was like rest in peace that's over because all these issues are losing massive pages and massive advertisers because it just doesn't transcend. Yeah. And what are they spending money on now? Our influencer marketing, they're spending it on ads on online, digital yeah. ads, Facebook, digital ads. Instagram, Google, YouTube. Tamara Mellon is killing it on Facebook and Instagram. Yes. Do you know that brand? Yes. I just yes. bought a pair of boots of hers and I've been stalking her ads for so long because they are so good. Which is crazy is because she came from the retail mind yeah. of high-end luxury and her first brand right out after um, Jimmy Choo yeah. didn't do well. Yeah. But now she learned from that and direct to consumer, killing it. Yep. Killing it. So good. And they were, they're awesome too, behind the scenes with their customer service. They need to take change of size. And it's been an amazing experience. I would totally buy from them again because... She does have some great pieces. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, they're definitely an investment. I'm not going to yes. lie. That's yes. why it's taken me almost a year to actually buy a pair. But I'm like, right. the piece that I found, they're very special. So it's like... Just tear and put it on the fridge. I know, it's like vision board. I'm yes. Like, house or shoes. House right, or shoes. right, like, right. Well, Hudson Valley. We're I know. Go, we're doing the We're Hudson going Valley. halfsies. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to split it. Okay, right. perfect. <laughs> Okay, but, so back to the top. Right, <laughs> but but fast forward to that, the editorial doesn't exist. What Anna Wintour, who is yes. huge, and we all aspire to her, you know, be her at one point and, and love the talent and love the work ethic, what she does really well no longer exists. Yeah. And that's why Condé Nast is struggling. And that's why all these magazines are shuttering doors. And editors are literally coming saying, I don't know where my job is going to be. Because they have to quickly understand and navigate that landscape of what what that is. So what I find is it's great to get an earned media. It's great to get placements. But it's also great to actually have conversations. And what does that look like? Mm-hmm. We what we do, what our agency does is put together these experiences with big brands and our passion is emerging brands. And emerging brands comes emerging budgets and being able to navigate that with not having to spend an exorbitant amount of money. Mm -hmm. Peloton, they just did a beautiful event in New York City that was all these high-end influencers. They got a whole video transaction of like them going on the treadmills but they spent $500,000. Yeah. You can do really cool stuff. When you have 500. <laughs> when you have 500. But what happens if but you, you don't, don't have that kind right, of Right. And you don't need to do that. And you can be very strategic and put together an experience that people want to organically come to. A lot of people think events, they think, great, we're going to have to do something at a bar, a restaurant, or a bar, right. which is like a huge no-no to yeah. me. And Why? Could people just get like Super, they're not like paying attention. Yeah, to you're coming. To, exactly. Like if you're a jewelry brand, I don't necessarily want to come to a restaurant to experience it. I want to come to maybe the headquarters. I want to come to a really mm. cool studio. I want to come to a workshop to actually get educated about how I can make it or how to see what that looks like, what the behind the scenes of what it looks like to, to make something. And what, so can you define what experiential marketing like really is just like crystal clearly? I mean, sure. You kind of have defined it already, but just, Sure. It, yeah. It's it's really, it's brands forget that they're storytellers. So it's yes. inserting that story, emotional connections, the who, why, where, what, and what behind that brand and putting together an experience that brings together media relationships. Yeah. So influencers, celebrities, potential marketing partners, segment producers, editors, the gamut for that, of everyone that's coming through that door is someone extremely influential that can help amplify your story. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, when those guests and those relationships are evangelizing your brand, it's a win-win. It's a win for the brand because they're getting their, their touch point out there. They're getting their brand awareness to all these different tangible relationships. And for us, because we're able to help create that momentum for them. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So you were talking a little bit more, like just briefly, some ideas that you could do, like what, what the experience might look like. So I want to talk a little bit more about what does it look like to actually create an experience and what kind of uh, return on investment should someone like think is a win 
if they were to do create an experiential marketing experience. That's a little weird. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> do something or PR experience, experiential PR experience. So it's really, it's almost thinking of it like an online campaign, Okay. except you're bringing online offline to really further that conversation to provide sampling of the product, to be able to provide feedback from all of these really influential people, okay, media cool. relationships, celebrities, you know, and taking that. So think like high-end focus group. Mm-hmm. And then to be able to create that story and insert that story that you're working with the brand to put together and put that into great placement. So influencer posts, influencer stories, publications where they're doing roundups of the event or they want to do a beautiful piece on the founder or you know something that they can include in their editorial calendar two or three months and they're starting the conversation. It could be a marketing partner that is a subscription box, or Mm -hmm. it could be a stylist that wants to use your jewelry on their celebrity clientele. Mm -hmm. There's just so much importance. And I know we all kind of hate having to go to those networking events and forcing ourselves to like go out to events after we worked, you know, 10 hours, but we have to do it Mm -hmm. because in-person contact and in-person conversations is so important. And we can't have that through just reading about the product on the website, about the brand on an influencer post. We really have to take that online to convert it to offline and have that conversation and further that conversation. You know, what's really interesting is that my friend, one of my best friends, Kate, uh, actually named my jewelry avatar after her, but um, (laughs) (laughs) my dream client avatar after my best friend. She used to work for a company called Piper Lime. They're no longer oh around. God, but they, I loved I Piper loved Lime. Piper Lime oh, so much. The store in Soho. It was so good. I used to go like once a week. <laughs> I know. I was devastated when they went out yeah. of business. But Gap decided to close the brand down because Gap is such a behemoth that even though it was like a super profitable company, it wasn't making enough of a dent in the Gap brand for right. them to keep it open. Right. But I remember when they were first starting, like their whole business model was to get like you know, they had Rachel Zoe and they got people together and they created so parties and yep. like sip and sees and shopping events, even before they had the store built. It was like only an online platform, but then they had the store because they realized from the beginning, like how important in-person experience is. And like one of the things like you were speaking, speaking at our live event, how important it is to make those in-person connections with real human beings. It's not just about standing behind the computer. So the more that you can take that your online presence and bring it to offline. Like there's, there's like almost like this resurgence coming back to solidifying. I don't know. I, what I think perceive as like brand value and like your stake in the market place. Totally. And people want to see that there's substance behind the brand. Yeah. So it's great to see the brand in pictures and visuals and video. And you're like, yes, I get it. But to also have those conversations with the brand's team, I think is just invaluable. And you can do so much more and and kind of amplify that message further. Another thing I wanted to touch upon, and you know, it's really important, like all these new words, experiential programming. Yes. Programming is obviously what we always transcend to clients, what we do. And everyone's like, what the what is that? What is that? that? Like what what is programming? Yeah. Um, and it's like like what you just, you know, talked about with Piper Lime. It's putting together an event or an experience. Or if it's a whole week of different events, Facebook live segments, podcast, you know, having live podcasts, Mm -hmm. which actually I want to talk to you about an event. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it. Perfect. (laughs) We'll talk about it offline. (laughs) Offline. We have a glass of wine after this. We decided this is a total sidebar. We were going to, we're recording this semi in the early evening and we're like, should we have wine on the podcast to make it like fun? And then we decided like, maybe we get a little too sloppy. So we would, we would, uh. Forgo the wine until after we record. <laughs> you can thank us later or I maybe know. not thank us at I all. I know. It might have been more entertaining <laughs> yes. with the wine. <laughs> but I think smart programming is really where brands can think of, you know, you don't really need to put a huge budget. If you want to do something, you know, smart, you want to, you know, thank some of the influencers that you worked with. Maybe it's just a group of 15 of them that you really want to highlight. Yeah. Invite them in for a dinner. Put together a great dinner and like, 
gift them, you know, your new collection or gift them a piece from your new collection so that they continue that emotional connection. They continue that relationship with you. Not everyone needs to get paid. And I get that everyone, you know, is doing something, but when you're showcasing and going above and beyond for them and working with them, they're going to organically want to, you know, showcase that they are loyal, that they're a loyalist. So, you know, putting together these little dinners or putting together a workshop at your office where you're inviting them in to come do like a do-it-yourself type of thing, I always think are the best ways that you can kind of creatively, you know, think about the budget and think of a non-existent budget and how you can be able to just pull this off. So how would you do this for people who weren't in like a big city like New York or LA or San Francisco or Miami or whatever the the places are. It's really just hyper local then. So yeah. you're you're going to those folks that are in the area that you want to work with or you have worked with in the past. I always think that these types of events are great for people that you haven't worked with. So you can yeah. kind of start, you know, navigating relationships. new relationships yeah. and making them in person and getting to know a little bit more about the brand is substantial. And you know, whether it's a dinner, whether it's, you know, again, a workshop, maybe it's a breakfast and like, you know, they're doing a whole beauty segment or, you know, they get glammed up and then they get, you know, to put on these beautiful, gorgeous, you know, pieces of jewelry. Mm -hmm. Just kind of think about what would benefit those relationships that you're reaching out to. So if it's the influencer community, you know, they get so much product to start with. Like what is something that you can do for them that they don't normally have access to or they don't normally get? Yeah. Is it something that, You can work with your in-house communications or publicists to get them some hyper-local press about what you're doing. Is it a gift guide that they can be included in that, you know, you're working working with the editors? Or is it a campaign that you want to eventually do where they can, right, that they they can get get paid? Exactly. Awesome. How would you mirror this with like a traditional PR campaign? I think a lot of traditional PR is kind of merging into this model, whether people want to like, they're going, exactly. You you know, like you have like these huge agencies like Ogilvy and like Weber Shank who are getting, you know, tremendous agency fees, but guess who they're outsourcing to? People like you. People like us that are just constantly thinking outside the box and creatively and having these relationships and being able to put together these super teams of, you know, production outlets. So I think this is the new way of doing PR because it's putting together and showcasing what the brand really is and that emotional connection. So organically, they want to share it with their communities. I love that. What's one of the coolest events that you put on? We just did one with Kind and um, the snack brand. We did it for Fashion Week. Oh, awesome. Is that the one you had in the penthouse? Yes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) We did it at the Beekman. This penthouse is my dream building. We were just talking about it. (laughs) We, well, that one, this one was at the Beekman um, Residence. Oh. So right next to the Beekman Hotel, they have apartment properties. Yeah, so we downtown. Did it, yes. Yep. We did it at the That's a great place. penthouse. And the views were just gorgeous of the Brooklyn Bridge. Like, again, giving them exclusive access to these beautiful, stunning views that no one really ever gets to see in New York City. So, I mean, we're just like, great, they're going to be taking selfies all along these windows. Let's yep. give them stuff. To- Let's give them exposure. <laughs> exactly. 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 So we had brands that like all the different brands we made sure it mirrored so that when they were taking photos, the words, you know, mirrored into their selfie. Um, so it was all branded. And then we also did it with tech health and wellness brands. So we were able to work with some really awesome emerging wellness brands in in that infused technology. Like Billy Whitehouse, you guys should definitely know because she's amazing. She has wearable X, which are yoga pants that have technology built into them. So like little strips so that when you put on the yoga pants and if you're a newbie or if you're perfecting a certain pose, it will actually tell you by getting a vibration to say you're out of line. So it kind of gets you into the the correct oh my pose. Gosh. So the really, really fun. teachers are going to be like it non-existent after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, <laughs> yes. Um, and it was it was just really fun to kind of work with a bigger brand who normally like to take not work with these smaller independent brands, but they were like, no, we we want to work with 
a community of discovering independence. And yeah. to me, we're like, let's do this. And just got on board with all these different brands. And it was just such a fun day. Exhausting, I but... Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious, like, um, when you're kind of building these media relationships, like, how do they start and what it what is it like? And how does... How does like a young or independent, like smaller brand get involved in something like this when they don't have a big budget? I think to answer the first question, how do they start with building relationships? I always feel like any agency, any brand that's going to do well is how they leverage their relationships. Because at the end of the day, that's all we have. Yep. We don't have, you know, access to exorbitant amount of dollars. It's really the relationships that we're able to do really cool. Yeah. I want to say shit. Right. Yeah. Shit. Really cool shit. shit. Really cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> Steph. <laughs> and, you know, from We're that- an explicit rating now on this episode. <laughs> awesome. I love it. And, and I think it's, it goes back to, you know, my internships and having those like breakfast meetings or being, you know, this little guinea pig, a part of these meetings where like, I was like, oh no, no one knows me or blah, blah, blah. But, you know, just kind of putting yourself out there all the time and taking those breakfast meetings, taking those coffees, taking those cocktails, taking those dinner meetings, eventually they all translate into really solid relationships, connections that you can then call on your phone and say, Hey, I need this done, you know, or Hey, like I have this great idea. I want to pitch you. And they're like, great. And exactly. And it's also too, like giving them great content and giving Mm -hmm. them, you know, also helping them out too. It's, it's a two way street. Absolutely. It's not, I always say it's a favor. If you're just asking for something, you have to be able to help reciprocate that. Exactly. And there are people that are out there that are always just going to be like, well, what's in it for me? And that's fine, but you don't need to work with them and they don't need to be part of your tribe. No, exactly. Exactly. So what are some ways that people, that designers who are just starting out can get like dabble in experiential marketing, like some easy places to start? I think looking at bigger events, like a New York Fashion Week, for instance, you don't have to be part of an official New York Fashion Week event because that's going to cost you tons of that's dollars. <laughs> um, and not even the bigger designers now are really showing the way that they used to is being able to kind of piggyback off an off event where people are already coming into town for and you can put something together as long as you have the right verbiage during New York Fashion Week to make sure it's not alluding to the person that it's, you know, something officially put on by all of their sponsors, but take advantage of the crowds that are already into the space. And, you know, people- also a great time to organize influencers. Totally. Or Absolutely. Yeah, to like a, a sip and see or something like that. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be 150 people. It could be, to me, I always think, keep it small, keep it curated, 25 people, 30 people that's when you're really going to start building these relationships, not for 150 people, because there's no way in one night you can really have an in-depth 15, 20 minute conversation with each person. Absolutely. That's a great piece of advice. So even if you're on the local level, if there's some like big event that's going on. South by Southwest. I mean, pretty much all of New York City and LA come into it. LA has a fashion week in October. You know, like you you just kind of have to research your events calendar and see what's out there and what would make sense for you and kind of just start reaching out to these event organizers. Sometimes they might just need product. You never know. And I think it's just, you know, having someone kind of help do that research for you. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add today? I mean, at the end of the day, is what you guys are doing and what we do and what we all do, it's stressful. Yep. And at the end of the day too, you have to remember that it has to be good stress. What we call it is organized chaos. Yes. And it might seem crazy town in the office, but on the flip, on the outside, no one sees that. And they see how much fun we're having. The, what we would think are amazing events that we're giving out to our guests and to our relationships. And I think sometimes we just have to kind of think about that. This is supposed to be fun. And if it's not fun, then we have to, we have to figure out that pivot. Exactly. (laughs) When it stops being fun, time to pivot. Exactly. 
So you offered up a really generous offer to the Thrive by Design community. Yes. To jump on little 30-minute strategy calls. Totally. What do you call them? Strategy calls? Yeah. Consults, chats, brain jumps. Whatever. Whatever. (laughs) call. 30-minute chat. (laughs) Chat. Let's do it. Yes. So um, where can people go and find find you? So on um, our website is JanineJust.com. On Instagram, it's at JanineJustINC. Personal is at JanineJust. And pretty much standard with Facebook and LinkedIn, you can find... Just find Janine? Ju- yep, yeah. Janine, well, just if, find Janine. If you do just Janine, that will find you at a whole other different site. <laughs> it's actually Janine Linder Molder. Oh, I don't know who that is. She's a porn star. Oh. <laughs> do not go to just Janine. <laughs> Janine Just, or JJ, as we like to call yes. her over here. <laughs> I didn't do a lot of CEO for that. Oh, <laughs> it's SEO, my. SEO. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. Yeah. Poor you with a name that is like, well, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Good times. It, yes. Well, maybe we'll get some like offshoots. Of yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if they want to go to the to the site, JanineJust.com backslash thrive, thrive, yes. We can sign up for 30 minute slots. Yes. And you'll we'll have a, a special uh, Thrive by Design link there, JanineJust.com forward slash thrive and you can book your 30 minute call with Ginny. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks for being here, JJ. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening today. I am thrilled to have had Janine on the show and hopefully Janine and I will be going to do much more karaoke in the future. We had a blast doing karaoke after we recorded this episode a couple days later And, uh, you know, I'm going to be having her more on the show and more will be revealed. Janine is going to be getting involved more frequently. Let's just put it that way with Flourish and Thrive. But I can't spill the beans yet on just how. So anyway, I'm going to scoot off. If you haven't done it yet, make sure that you head on over to take our quiz. We'll have the show notes over in or the link over in the show notes, I should say. It's called, remember, it's the Your Jewelry Brand's Brilliance Factor. And I'm going to be sharing with you how you can leverage your unique brand style, creativity style, business style to grow your business as quickly as possible in a way that feels amazing to you. All right. If you haven't done so yet, I would love for you to give the show a rating and review. Make sure that you're subscribed to us wherever podcasts are. Podcasts are sold? Podcasts aren't sold. They're free. (laughs) You know what I mean. Wherever you can listen to a podcast. Anyway, I'm excited. I'm going to be signing off for now. Thanks so much for listening. This is Tracy Matthews. Take care until next time. 